sorry for the interruption ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the onward technologies limited q3 fy24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha from ENY Investor Relations. Thank you and over to you Ms. Asha. Thank you Manu. Good evening to all of you. Welcome to the Q3 FY24 earnings call of Onward Technologies Limited. The results and presentation have already been mailed to you and you and you can also view them on our website at www.onwardgroup.com to take us through the results today and to answer your questions we have with us mr jigar mehta managing director of onward technologies limited he will start the call with the business update and financial performance for the quarter which will be then followed by q and a session as usual i would like to remind you anything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties that we face this is an uncertainty uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with the sebi and subsequent annual report that you can find it on our website having said that I will now hand over the call to Mr. Jigar Mehta. Over to you, Jigar. Thank you, Asha. Good evening, everyone, and thank you again for joining our Q3 FI24 earnings call. It is my pleasure to speak with all of you again. Before we dwell into our quarter details, I would like to take a couple of minutes and. Uh, share the amazing journey that you had over the last 12 months in the 2023 was a historic year for us and i want to highlight some of the key strategic decisions that we made and providing insights into some of our future plans so in 2023 we simplified our business model into three industry verticals which is industrial equipment and heavy machinery transportation and mobility and healthcare business and across three main horizontals which was uh, digital services and the electronic services and mechanical engineering services if you go back 12 months we were all over the place and we were getting into a situation where um we were narrowing down on the three verticals which we believe could be a very robust fast growing and futuristic verticals for us and that has led to this entire 3 by 3 matrix for us which is what i would like to talk a bit more about in addition to this we also prioritized our markets mainly in the us which is about uh, 40% of our revenue and 40% of our revenues today europe which continues to grow from single digits to about uh, 14% today and uh, gcc market in india where we are extremely focused on we also took the year where we transitioned out of all non strategic clients across the board uh to put things in perspective we were at 250 clients around the pandemic now we're down to 88 clients as of this quarter which gives us a very clear execution strategy around our large focused uh, strategic clients uh the strategic move actually had a lot more impact on our business that we believe uh, which is very long term in nature uh and it will be very rewarding and it will make sure that it is a uh, well sustaining business model quarter on quarter year on year over the next few years we streamlined our internal operations by implementing and going live on ERP on Microsoft Dynamics on our CRM which is Salesforce and tons of other internal HRM and APIs uh PSA tools which created the automation which becomes a scalable enterprise over the next few days and weeks uh we are in the final stages of connecting all the APIs which will connect all our internal systems which helps us scale our business much faster for the next 3 to 5 years in terms of customer acquisition we onboarded three large clients in Q1 we onboarded six in Q2 and four in the last quarter in Q3 now i want to take a minute to identify what a strategic client for us looks like a strategic client for us is a customer which has the potential to grow in north america europe and india 
where we believe we can at least generate $10 million per year, which means customers' R&D budget is at least half a billion to a billion dollar plus every year. So there's enough opportunity for Onward with the right competencies and capabilities to mine and farm these accounts, which can actually help us grow in this business. And that is what has led to our transformation over the last five years. In addition to this, this financial year, large number of our key people moved into strategic positions and locations um, across North America, Europe, and in India. And we also continued to hire across all the three horizontals and the three verticals, which is what our customers are appreciating more and more and more, and that's what has led to from single-digit EBITDA margin in 2022. We delivered double-digit uh, in 2023. And I think the future is even brighter as we uh, move forward for the next, as I said, uh, several years. We are very committed to our stated goal by FI26. Uh, we know after the last couple of quarters we have our three tasks, but we do believe that the customer um, roster that we have, which is some of the best customers, best OEMs in the world, um, and it's an amazing management team and continuously getting stronger delivery organization that we have sufficient comfort and confidence that we believe we are on the right track towards uh, the guidance or the potential that we have given in the past. With a more financial uh, war chest, and we'll talk a bit more about it, we have shared that in our earnings deck. We, um, we, we have now 87 crores cash in hand. We believe and that we keep increasing um, as we see the momentum over the next few quarters, we believe we are not sufficient to invest back in setting up centers of excellence in labs to where our customers want us to be. So, and that's what is getting us excited and uh, we're moving forward with that as we begin 2024 on a strong note. In terms of infrastructure, as we speak, our team moved into a beautiful new office in London uh, a couple of weeks back on Jan 8th. We are moving into a new office in Chicago in the next few weeks. We are moving into a new office in Pune, in Banner. And we are moving into a beautiful new office in uh, Bangalore. Post all of these offices, all of these offices, we are moving from single building to uh, tech parks to what where our customers would want us to be. And this will help us increase our offshore coverage and our offshore presence where we can um, deliver more confidently meeting all the necessary data security standards of our OEM customers. Now coming back to the vertical, uh, sorry, coming back to the nine months of this financial year and then the quarter, on the nine months revenue, our revenue was 350 crores, 354 crores, uh, which was a growth of 10.8% of year on year basis, and EBITDA margin at uh, 11%. Uh, profit after tax witnessed a growth of 6.4 times uh, on a year on year basis to 27.2 crores. Our EPS uh, was the highest at 11.90 in the first nine months uh, compared to just 1.87 the same time last year. And our profitability is um, this year and the cash generation is evident about what we have achieved, the investment that we made in the last few years and the result that we saw this year. And we believe that what we are trying to do now in the next few years looks even more exciting. Coming back to Q3, our revenue witnessed a decline of 5.1% quarter on quarter to 114 crores. And this was primarily linked to the furloughs um, and in the holiday season last two weeks of December. We were on the right track, but I think that impact was substantial for us. Uh, where 25 plus clients of ours declared complete shutdown and furloughs, and which had a one time impact of 6.18 crore. If you Add that the numbers would look very different. Um, in terms of industry footprint, our industrial equipment heavy machinery contribute 51% of our revenues. Uh, transportation and mobility vertical, which is mainly autom automotive and rail transportation, contributed 38%. That was one of our fastest growing in Q3. And uh, healthcare uh, continued to maintain momentum and uh, is about 8% of our revenue. We, we, we won several new clients, um, which we had, uh, where we completed the signing of the master services agreements, and now we're excited going into 2024 and how we mine and farm those accounts uh, much better. Uh, digital line of business, digital services continue to gain traction, and now it's about 40% plus of our revenues in Q3. And we believe all the three verticals, whether it's digital, ember, electronics, and mechanically, 
going into 2024 looks very exciting. While we remain committed that our digital will get to 50%, I think the other two businesses are also seeing amazing traction as we move on uh, from um, into Q4 and Q1 of next year. In terms of the revenue of engagement, our on-site also ratio continue to remain very similar, 30 to 70%, and we believe that trend will continue for the next couple of quarters. As I mentioned earlier, our total cash and bank, uh, total cash and bank balance improved uh, drastically, drastically compared to a year ago, from 37 crores to 87, 35 crores to 87 crores today in 12 months, and we still see a lot of runway with our. DSO continuously getting better. If you remember, we are close to 100 days a year ago, and now we're down to 72 days. So we continue, it's continual improvement, continual progress is what we are chasing, and uh, very happy to see the progress on this side. In terms of client loaster, we, are now, we, are, we have 88 amazing active clients across North America, Europe, and India, and 13 of that now contribute more than a million dollars. We are about three inching towards five million, and uh, very soon we'll have a customer or two uh, crossing the $10 million um, milestone as well. Our top 25 customers continues to keep growing and now are contributing 85% of our revenue, and we see a huge leeway with them in terms of how do we uh, mine and farm the accounts much better. It's about cross-selling and upselling all our new capabilities. Um, in terms of our headcount, we are at 2,604 employees as of December uh, 31st, 2023, with a much higher revenue base compared to 2,973, same time last year, 12 months ago. And the exit or the decrease in headcount is predominantly driven by the transitioning out of our uh, domestic or India-based ITS business. We have, continue, we have 13 offices, three in U, two in US, one in Canada, three in Europe, um, and five cities in India. And we continue to make sure these become a strategic thing for us for the next three years. So if you see our planning, and that's what we are uh, given in terms of upgrading all our infrastructure in line with what we are hearing from our customers. Um, and, and my last point, I'm very happy and delighted with all the hard work that done over the last several years. Uh, one of the key achievements of the quarter for us was the entry of marquee investors into our cap table. Uh, I'm very excited to see their confidence in our business model, our management team, and what uh, and what we are going after. So again, welcome welcoming them um, in the journey, and we look forward to welcoming more institutions to be part of our journey as well. To conclude, we are optimistic about the future growth opportunities. Our commitment to profitable growth, focused industry verticals, and strategic and geographical presence remains untiring. We appreciate your continued support, and I will now hand over the floor to the operator to start the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Bala Murali Krishna from Oman Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Talking about uh, this uh, decline on the revenue on account of this uh, website, uh, so the um, difference will be around eight four six. So what should be the will be the margin if we exclude that option? Mr. Bala Murali, uh, your line is not clear. There is a lot of disturbance. Come again. Yeah. Yeah, in this, in this quarter, we have declined revenue as compared to last quarter. And we were told that because of this worker strike, so there is a uh, difference of around 8 Bala, I would request you to yeah. please use the headset. Yeah, I'm using a handset only. Yeah, now you are clear. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, this quarter we have a revenue decline because of this uh, worker strike. Uh, so there is a difference of around 8 crores for revenue recognition. So what could be the EBITDA margin if we uh, exclude this one off for in this quarter? Uh, 
हेलो यस हाय हाय बालाजी करियर आई आई थिंक योर क्वेश्चन वाज इफ देयर वाज नो फर्लोस व्हाट वुड बी द एबिटा मार्जिन यस ओके सो अगेन द इंपैक्ट ऑफ द फर्लोस द एग्जैक्ट रुपी वैल्यू ऑफ 6.1 करोड़ so you can just add that because obviously at that same time we had full salaries for our employees so that was the one time impact but and uh, secondly i'm just uh, uh, going forward down the line uh, the two three years so, so uh, uh, how do you see this uh, transportation and mobility sector to contribute our revenue with the like percentage of the revenue how much it could be going forward at the three years down the line I am not sure if I understood the question clearly, but what would be a revenue three years down the line? Yes, uh, in this uh, E R and D segment especially. So for the first nine months of this year, our revenue is three hundred and fifty-four crores, and we believe uh, um, as a milestone, what we are pursuing, what we are. focused on is how do we get to or we deliver 100 million dollars by fy26 so that's the milestone that we are chasing that's the milestone that drives us that we are passionate about and we believe that is still something that we can achieve the entire focus of mine and our entire management team and the rest of the team is on execution the potential is there and why we feel good is the two we have the customers and we have the employees so two of the biggest challenges what a growing young company like us has is that and i think we have overcome that now we are at a stage where it's all about execution so can we execute seamlessly and that's where the next couple of years the next couple of quarters for us uh, are important thank you we have our next question from the line of nitish from chris capital please go ahead Hello hi uh hope I'm... Hello uh Nitish we are not able to hear you Hello am I audible Oh uh, yes go ahead Yeah hi uh so I have a couple of questions the first one on growth uh so just want to ask what uh, you know what gives the company confidence that you know growth will come back and uh, just another one that have has the uh, new account billing started Hello. Yes, hi. I got the questions. Um, so, Nitish, coming back on the growth side, the question is, what is the confidence of the growth? So, we feel good where we are, right? In terms of again, growth is uh, outcome of what we do for our customers. There are two types of growth in services business, as you know. There's one where you are constantly adding new customers to grow the revenue. For us, we are constantly identifying the customers. out of the 88 that we have which are those 10 customers which can get to 10 million dollars a year and we are investing behind them right and that's where we are seeing amazing momentum with several of our customers in terms of moving up the value chain from 1 billion to 3 billion 3 to 5 5 to 10 so instead of being everything to everybody we are trying to be somebody something to somebody right that's the whole logic of what we are trying to do number 1 number 2 our future the next 3 to 5 years is about our existing customers so today we do not have a lot of hunters or sales hunters in the market right all of them, we are we are transition that budget into account management uh into farming into more subject matter experts into more domain experts because we are trying to delve go deep into our current customer engagements just to give an example we are supporting a customer let's say for data analytics for digital services we are also trying to sell to them autonomous driving or a let's say it's automotive customer we are selling a dash capabilities to them we are selling infotainment capability to them we are selling telematics capability capability to them we can clear the client side we want a large project for vnb validation and verification now the same customer we are also selling mechanical product engineering services so it's all about selling all the three service lines to our existing customers that's what the focus is and the opportunities and the avenues to grow are enormous so we are not seeing any challenge there so okay. that's the addressing the first question on the growth side and your second question was uh has the billing for new account started 
has a billing. So billing for new account is not started. So the uh, invoicing for the clients that we started in Q1 has already started. Um, and all of them are ramping up slowly. And I think all of them will get towards 1 million, 3 million, 5 million, and that will, as I said, if you keep executing well towards $10 million a year. Okay. And, um, okay, got it. And uh, is the company financing? So, so just to clarify, Nitish, for us, when you said billing started, I'm not counting less than $100,000, right? I'm counting about when do they go to my top 25 clients. So there could be some projects we might do here and there for them. We could do some complex work for them somewhere um, or just a small fixed, FP fixed price project we could do for them. Now those transactional work is I'm not accounting towards 10 million or the milestone goal that we have. What I'm focusing on is when do these customers get to the top 25 and we have large number of them which has potential to get there and that's where the focus is on execution. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you so much. That's all from my side. Thank you, Thank sir. You. We will have our next question from the line of Vikas Mistri from Moonshot Ventures. Please go ahead. Sir, I have a couple of questions. First is that how many patents till now we have put forward? Hello? Yes, hi. Hello. So we don't file patents. Our first line of our contract, first page of our contract is any work that onboard engineers or delivery managers or subject matter experts do for a client, the patents are 100% owned by the client. And that's one of the key reasons we show the flexibility in terms of to the customer as a young company. Okay, so on, you don't- Onward like employees could have patents from their earlier careers or education, but as a company, we do not file patents. Okay, okay. My so next question is that, uh, have you, uh, do you think that you have built the organization all top management is already for that scale up your thinking or you uh, intend to hire some more senior people from other organizations? So we have an amazing team which has got us here. Uh, they were all, majority of them or all of them have been with me, my, top, uh, my business team since I took over the company. And uh, they're doing a fabulous job and continuously uh, challenging them with new territories and new roles. Uh, and uh, and scale. In addition to the, around them, we are adding a lot of tech. So we have not even got started there. While we have hired a lot of people in the last uh, three years post the pandemic, because we also want to add a lot of people uh, uh, in all the three verticals and all the three horizontals. Because please keep in mind, let's say if you have 75 customers, the number is 88. I'm just giving an example. You have 75 customers. So actually, we need that level of depth to cover these customers. Today, maybe we have and maybe 20 or 30% of them. Okay. Right? So you will see us continuously adding a lot of uh, uh, talent that will complement all of us in the organization across the three horizontals and the three verticals. My question was limited to only the top management hires. Says that they can bring some more business and depth from it. Okay. Uh, next, my next question is that uh, what is the kind of revenue ramp up you see in a typical client you get on Q1, let's say, first year, and how when the day curve happens and suddenly these clients start giving you more additional work uh, from your past experience? Can you give me the cohort analysis of that? Sure, sure. I can tell you what I've seen. I'll just take last 12 months as an example. So let's say if you start a customer. Uh, if we see usually a customer for us takes anywhere from nine months to 12 months to get to the first million. Mm -hmm. right? that's, the, that's the real milestone uh, for us. Now, if that doesn't happen, most likely our, we don't end up investing much more behind that engagement. Mm -hmm. Right? Please keep in mind, as I said, we don't have to win every war or every battle. Out of 88, we have to win 10. So it's all about prioritizing where you can be a valuable uh, supplier, partner to the customer. So that's the first journey. Once you get to the first million, then it's about sustaining it for, let's say, at least six months, one year. And then going to three and five, I think it's very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can easily get in the third or fourth year to three to five million dollars. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so my final question is that you are when you see that uh, our revenue bifurcation from uh, time material to contract wise, when you see this shifting material to the contract side, or it will remain same as it is uh, as of now. So I've shared this earlier. I think I get this question every quarter. Uh, I personally prefer time and material thing because we are still a very young company in a very large ERND industry, a very matured industry. So our biggest trend continues to be to provide the flexibility, the agility uh, to our customers. And that's where our customers like us. And I think we continue to do that part. And some customer engagements where we have reached a certain level of maturity, uh, where we might have, we have an ODC for them, we are setting up another dedicated center for them or a lab for them. Those project, those areas, we can get into fixed price projects. So we are seeing that happen as well with some of our larger customers, the customers where we have relationship for more than five years. Okay. So I, in the in the near term, T and M will continue. In the long term, uh, we hope to start building for large multi-million dollar. That's always a dream: large multi-million dollar fixed price projects. A lot of our delivery leaders have a lot of experience executing large projects. The backdrop of this question, Zigar, was that he, uh, we are seeing that uh, Gen AI and other AI is LNM. Uh, we'll start cannibalizing some of the work which we do on digital side. Do you think that any such pads on your side? Because if you try to put time and material, then then that will get cannibalized. That's what I. Uh, excellent question. Um, you know, it's something where we have to move towards. We are not spending a lot of time or our investments towards that today. That's what we would like to do. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, David. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will have our next question from the line of Lokesh Sharma Family Fund. Hello. Hello. Am I audible to you? Hello. Yes, yes please. Go ahead. Yes. So overall, I think this is a holler of a quarter, especially in light of state sale done by promoters and your PE partners. So I can't understand why has our growth slowed down so much, considering we are a $60 million company. So what steps are we talking, uh, taking to start growth again? And will there be any impact on margins? Yes, hi. So our growth has slowed down. Uh, growth has not. Um, growth has definitely slowed down compared to 2022, because the focus was on more value-added business and more quality business. Uh, the Q3 impact took us by surprise as well, predominantly because of just it happened last one week or ten days of December, where customers announced uh, furloughs or shutdowns or vacations. Um, I don't know what happens in other companies, but this happened to Onward, and it's very new to us. Uh, and it's something we are learning to, and I think we'll be much better prepared for it in the next few years. So I think that was the first question. In terms of the second question, in terms of growth coming back, I think the growth, we should see exciting opportunities and growth coming into both in 2024 and in 2025. I don't think we're starting a quarter saying that we're not going to grow. I think we're starting a quarter saying we want to grow and that there are a few things which are catching us by surprise. Mm -hmm. And while we don't want to compromise margins, um, that's one of the reasons why we feel very good about what we've achieved last year. Now, coming into 2024, I don't think we will be compromising either top line or bottom line growth. Objective is to build a high quality business around high quality clients with uh, extremely high quality talent. That's what the goal is. And we remain passionately focused on it as every day uh, when we come into office. Okay, thank you. And uh, secondly, looking at your LinkedIn page, we have done a lot of senior level hiring in the healthcare space. So what is our plan around that? And uh, when can it start contributing materiality to our revenue? So great observation. Um, I, I don't think we've done a lot of senior hiring only in healthcare. Healthcare is just one vertical for us or the smallest, newest vertical for us. We have three verticals. We are hiring people in all the three verticals uh, based on the size and scale of the vertical. So for example, if it's an industrial equipment vertical, we are hiring a lot of people there, which is 
So let's say with 50% of our revenues, we find 50% of our contribution, and 50% of onward investment goes there. So we're not necessarily in a situation where we take away the resources from industrial and put in some other vertical, just to clarify that. So we're investing in all three. You will see in the next couple of days, weeks, huge number of people joining our uh, transportation and mobility vertical. So all the three verticals is something we are very excited about, and we grow all three of them. Uh, some things are feasible, some verticals will grow in this quarter, and some verticals will grow in the other quarter. But we like all the three verticals, and um, we do not have a preference one, two, three years from now, three years down the line, which one is the biggest or which one is the fastest growing. We want to invest behind all three. Um, and we're seeing amazing traction and a sales funnel as we speak. Okay. And uh, you have given a guidance of 100 million for financial year 26. So what is the sanctity of that now? Considering the billing has not started yet. So what is the sanctity of that now? So I, I shared this earlier. I'm not sure if you missed that. But we are, as I said, that's our goal, right? We set up the goal in 2020 or 21 uh, when we were a strategic business with hardly $10 million, right? So it was a dream that we said, Okay, what, what, will, what is the right goal for us to come out of the pandemic, to come out of sitting at home? And we came up with a goal. We are already much ahead of halfway through the journey. And we have to keep executing towards the balance. As I said, the clients are there. The team is in place. It's all about execution and in some cases getting lucky. Right? Otherwise, I don't think there is much complications or science in it. But it's all about onward team and the team that I have put in place, we are able to execute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's so we are very committed and driven towards the goal. We are not changing it every day just because of one quarter or one year of what happens. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jigar. Thank you, Thank sir. You. We have our next question from the line of Sriram, an investor. Please go ahead. Hey, thank you. Uh, Jigar, Sriram here. Um, just the same questions. Uh, I think you answered it, but... Uh, in terms of uh, the sequential decline, uh, the revenues also declined year on year when the furlough must have been applicable last year as well. So uh, any other reason other than furlough that the revenue declined even on the year on year basis? Shriya, hi, good evening. Uh, not necessary. I mean, not really. Right? It's only... Okay. Um, you know, the one is the third look. What also happens usually in December for the last two years, and I think uh, we discussed this in the past, when the customers usually in U.S. and Europe go on holiday, they want their suppliers in India to work. So usually last two years, at least for us, December or end of December, when during Christmas and year holidays, when the customer had shutdowns or holiday period, we were still working. And in some cases, we were actually working overtime, so which we are uh, uh, which has a direct impact on both top line and bottom line. This year was very different. A lot of customers, a lot of companies in the U.S. at least, where then we work with, uh, literally started shutting down from December 10th to December 15th. And um, it's a new learning for us, I, I guess. And the feedback given to us was that everybody had such a phenomenal year. It was more about giving their employees, their management team, their factories time to just enjoy the moment, recoup, and come back fresh for the next year. Of course, there was on some short, some cost pressures in the year ending in the U.S. and Europe. But I, that's predominantly where we are at and how we are taking the situation, what we have learned from our customers. Because it's not just been one customer or two, it's been broad-based. And uh, the uh, EBITDA decline has been uh, even sharper than the uh, revenue decline by a fairly huge margin. So that's simply because of this revenue is the only cause for the EBITDA or is there something else? Only. There's only one single thing, right? Otherwise, actually, we'll have the highest habit in Q3 compared to the you know, previous quarters, if you just add the number. Okay. That's, that's encouraging. Uh, you referred to this a couple of uh, times in this call itself, uh, Jigar. Uh, so, 100 million uh, translates to about 210 crores a quarter, which I think should perhaps kick in from April 2025 on a quarterly basis, otherwise that 838 for the closal, it's not going to catch up, right? This is, these are businesses that take time to ramp up. So uh, this 115, 120 
Would you have a glide path quarter wise as to how that will ramp up to about 200 plus in a year or so from now? Sorry, what is 200 plus? Like 100 million. Um, yeah. About uh, 800 crores. Yes. Uh, so that's about 200 crores a quarter. Just approximately. Sure. And, uh, and we're now at about 115, 120. Um, so just uh, the question was, um, would you have a glide path? How do you get from 120 to 200 quad per quarter revenue in a year's time? It's it's a great question, and that's something that we are working on. We had a same planning session last few days. Our global teams are here in Bombay as we speak. Um, it's it's more about existing clients mining them effectively and farming them effectively, right? Or it's about going back to our customers, which have come up with huge inquiries for us, existing customers, and investing behind them, right? If you the same conversation we had two years ago, we were constantly trying to win new customers and exit customers at a very fast pace. Now we are not exiting anything. It's more about focusing on uh, existing customers which are asking us to invest in so many new places, right? Whether it's technology areas or it's just new regions. If you see a customer in Germany asked us to invest in US, or you customer in US and asked us to invest in UK, or help them build teams or, or execute a project in UK. We didn't have all these capabilities earlier. Now, with a global structure in place, our global US and uh, Europe head is now based in Michigan. Uh, my Europe head is in London. So we have a good strong management team outside India, the right cities, the right places. Now it's all about, as I said, going deep into the customer engagement. I think if you're able to do that in US and Europe, we can be successful. Okay, Jigar, I think that's, uh, that was my uh, broad question. It's just that uh, this 115 has been a kind of, uh, uh, I know it's a tough year. It's not been easy for, for many, for most in the IT sector, but uh, been in the 115, 120 range, if you really had to hit that 200, then I think sequentially quarter ways, there's got to be a 15 crore, 20 crore bump up. Um, that was the point I was, um, I, I think, yeah, so that was the point. And also since it's for all TNN contracts, you will end up having to ramp up 400 financial resources as well. It's it's not um, fixed price on an IP based building, right? So uh, that's something that we have, uh, a runway to do it in a year's time. So to clarify again, it's not been a tough year. I think it's been the best year in my career or my history. Yeah. And I think yeah. that applies to I think all my team members. This is the best year we've ever had in terms of uh, all the parameters that we can dream of or think of. And if I can have another one year or two years like this, I think it'll be a dream. Um, keep in mind this year also we had a large number of tail clients, right? So if you remove all that, numbers will look very different. But bottom line, cash generation, DSO, quality of customer, quality of employees has just been phenomenal. Uh, so coming back in terms of uh, next year, absolutely. So we have to ramp up and we have a beautiful, that's why I said earlier, it's all about executing. Hiring 400 or even 1,000 people a year is not a challenge. We have very capable people who can do that. It's more about investing in the right areas which are scalable and which are sustainable year on year for the next seven years. We don't want to go and invest in a year which is going to die out two years later. That's the old onward. We want to focus on areas which can be value addition to our customers where they also appreciate what we are trying to do with them. And we go global with them. Now the entire growth has to come only from the India market is definitely a challenge because then you're just playing volume and then you're talking about thousands of people. And that's not the objective. We believe our 50% of the revenue from the international market has to move towards 70%. Then if you add the number of headcount becomes very margin, very, very small and very achievable uh, for the next several quarter perspective. I understand. I understand. So thanks, uh, Jigar, thanks for this transparency and uh, the update. Thank you very much and wish you a great into 2024. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Gauri Mishra from Narottam Seksarya Family Office. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hi, uh, Jigar. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I when I put the question, it was for that $100 million uh, revenue projection. But uh, 
now you have explained that in detail already i have a query uh, we don't see any uh, effective tax rate trend for us why is it changing every quarter hello yes hi uh, great question actually i asked my cfo for the same thing and let let us finance team get back to you <laughs> i think it should it's i'm not an expert in taxation but i will but it it is fluctuating way too much minus 19% 36% 40% 19% 31% so there is no trend at all i mean no we will we will make sure we have an answer from you both from our statutory auditor which is kpmg bsr and from our cfo asha if you can please take a note and get back to them in the next 24 hours or by monday morning sure the yeah. yeah and uh, just uh, i might sound repeated question because this 100 million dollars everyone has been asking uh, i understand that there is luck which is going to play a factor when you already uh, you are capable of hiring and you are looking into mining the right clients at the right place uh, how confident are you uh, on probability this that it will not slip uh, there might be obviously difficult years it can we, do we see any the page is happening in our target of that 100 million by fy26 end just trying to figure out how how is the global market shaping how confident are you that we would achieve that so no, no yeah i said i don't wake up every morning thinking i'm going to do 100 million i wake up every morning thinking i'm going to build a beautiful company and i said the 100 million which we announced as a goal we feel very positive that we can achieve that number um a year ago we were way ahead of where we thought we would be today we are a bit behind i think it's all about putting things in um in perspective right it's about can we grow year on year towards that we're talking about a small base we're talking about all the right investments done with beautiful team great infrastructure great customer feedback we're getting into all the quadrants So we have all the stuff in place. Now it's all about executing. Um, so as of today, it's very positive. Okay. And, uh, and uh, uh, congratulations! You started new offices uh, across the globe, uh, but would just definitely not, not started. Just upgrading offices. I mean, we, uh, <laughs> okay. So, but uh, would uh, they are uh, keeping uh, taking in new uh, heads in different places? have impacted more on your margins because there have been furloughs in the quarter uh, how much of that uh, addition to your uh, head global heads at different places would have impacted uh, is there a percentage kind of uh, idea you can give us not much again these are not big expenses please keep in mind we are not looking at daily weekly quarterly numbers we are looking at annually even from 4% to 11% in one year okay. average if you look at 2020 2023 so it's been a phenomenal year from that perspective uh quality of clients has changed quality of my team has changed and we have to make sure that we are constantly upgrading and investing behind our people and our customers so it's a very natural thing in a growing company i think you would understand appreciate that you yeah, are not sure. very very big numbers it's more about doing it it's the timing which is what matters to us and what matters to our clients and to our employees uh we upgrade all these offices because a customer came back and said you know if you are looking at serious offshore work you have to be in tech parks you cannot be in isolated building somewhere um you know it's a, it's a basic hygiene factor like i call it more hygiene than luxury and we are investing in the right places and um, you know very happy where we are at right now uh, adding a lot of people in some locations we're running short of space in some locations we have a lot of extra space so it's constantly balancing out which our management team does every six months okay all right uh, all the best we hope that you reach that 100 million dollar in fi26 no, that's just one milestone we have a long way no to... that's the first milestone and then the next milestone will come thank you thank you we will have a next question from the line of prata maliwal from mount intra finance please go ahead uh, hi am i audible 
Yes, sir. Please Hello. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Jagat. Uh, just wanted to ask, since uh, you talked about that we've had uh, some furlough impact in Q3, which is to be expected, of course. So, just wanted to say that since you kind of seen it in the last few weeks of December, so what is the status now? Has that normalized, or is are we seeing an extended effect into Q4 as well, which can kind of curtail the growth even in the next quarter? No, this was just uh, again a great question. This is only for the holiday season. Everybody is back in office. We started building projects. Uh, everything is back in full action. Customers are even more excited than they were last year. Uh, so it's looking very positive as we speak. Again, but I'm not looking at day to day. I'm I'm saying from 2024 perspective, it's looking very exciting for us. Where how we are seeing it, and really our whole management team was here last few days in Bombay from all over the world. You know, just the confidence and the positivity that they all share was uh, was refreshing. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for that. Now, uh, just one thing, since you pointed out that we are not so much actively chasing after new clients, we are, our focus is more towards mining our clients. So, just in this regard, I noticed that uh, fall in the number of one million clients from fifteen to thirteen. Is there anything to call out here? It could have dropped below. It could have dropped to 950k. I, I think these are just technical things, not something I really look into every day. These are more. But if you see the number of revenue from top 25 clients continues to remain, I think about between 80 and 90 percent. That's the key parameter, right? Those are the key customers that believe in uh, our story. Those are the customers that are backing us, and those are the customers that they continuously investing behind. It's 13, 14, 15, 16, I think it's just up and down a quarter based on uh, the actual definite number in the ERP. Okay, uh, understood. And just one final question around the hiring outlook. Now, I think in our previous call, we've called out that our business model is one where that since we're a young company, we're relatively new, so we don't actively hire people and then look for projects. More, It's more that we get contracts and then we kind of hire in response to it. So just wanted to reconcile with that we've had almost a 10% uh, fall YOY on our headcount. So what is the hiring outlook going ahead? So let me, let me simplify the answer. The reduction in headcount YOY is because of the exiting of the uh, domestic IT business clients. If you would okay, like specific okay. numbers, I'm sure our team, uh, Ernst and Young, can uh, share the numbers. But just to give a specific number, just to see how the broad based, uh, this theory behind the thesis behind this is, let's say if we have 2,900 people, we must have exited business for maybe about 700, 800 people, which would have brought us down to 2,200, 2,300. And we must have added about 400 people in our core business, which brings us to 2,600. I'm just giving you broad numbers, but they can give you the specifics. So if you go into 2024, we believe we will be at similar headcount plus minus, um, let's say below 26, 20, below 27, 2800 by end of this year. I'm just guesstimating based on what we are seeing. But all the new hires happening in US and Europe, some hires happening in India, and we continue to exit large tail accounts. So, for example, we're exiting one client. At some point, we already decided that we're going to exit that client with about 100, 120 people, engineers working on it, okay. stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, just to clarify, sir, you said uh, uh, in CY24, you gave a hiring outlook. Did you give a number? I just missed out on that. Sorry. We don't give hiring. We are not given any outlook quarterly or annually about hiring or about uh, revenues or margins. What we always said is we are building a beautiful company, R and D company, uh, who is not competing with anybody else in a market which is growing, in a market where customers are looking for new partners, predominantly because of the disruption that came in the digital side. And if Onward can build a team engine behind that, I think we have we can build a beautiful hundred million dollar company. So that was my dream. That continues to be my dream as we speak as well. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks for taking my questions and uh, best of luck for the quarter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Mr. Prolin, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Jigar. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. So, uh, 
I want to clarify a few things, right? Firstly, as you said, right, this year has been great for you based on all the parameters. Uh, but again, you know, for the last four quarters, even if I include the four low impact of December quarter, we have been at a revenue run rate of 120 crore. So what you may uh, by, uh, you know, a great year, is this the quality of revenue which you are attributing to? Uh, and can you uh, touch a little bit more on that aspect? And in case if, I mean, what I understand is that you are exiting an India business, which was uh, not your focus area. So maybe in the future, if this drag is going to continue uh, for a few more quarters, it would be great if in the presentation you could, you know, uh, break up the revenue stream between your focus area and the one which you are, you know, in a way uh, exiting. So if you can just give the color as to how, uh, you know, uh, this uh, quality of revenue has improved or that's better uh, every quarter, that would that would help. Sure, sure. So let's talk about first the customer. I think you touched upon that. Uh, you know, our customer profile has changed. Uh, dramatically or transformed beautifully towards where we wanted to go in all the three verticals. Right? So that's the first part. So today in the three verticals, we are working with the top five OEMs in each of these three verticals. That's the first part. Uh, and each of these verticals, each of these OEMs have multi-billion dollar R&D budgets. Keep in mind, onward traditionally for the previous two decades was playing in an environment where we were the largest supplier or trying to be the largest supplier uh, in a customer's R&D budget. So the R&D budget is only 20 crores, 25 crores, one is getting 5 crores from it. Today we are not trying to be the largest supplier. We are saying we become a niche ER&D services supplier in a customer budget which is multi-billion dollars. So that's where the avenue is. That's the first part. Number two on the um, that side, if you see the number, we have gone from 1.3% to 7%, 7.7% in one year at a profit after tax ratio. I think this number is on 540% year on year growth. And, and same thing for EBITDA and PBT and all of the parameters. If you see the business profile of the company as well, same time last year, we had about more than, I think 14, 15% of our revenues came from the domestic IT business which is a historical legacy business of the company, which had 1,000 plus employees, which is now down to 100 people only. And 900 is what we exited already in the last 12, 15 months. Uh, and that also we are moving out by end of March. So that's what I mean by the quality of business. Now, if you look at what is domestic IT business, why did we exit that? They were not loss-making clients. They were very good clients. But we're invoicing at three, four, five, six dollars an hour. Right, compared to the average 16, 18, 25 dollars an hour is where we are investing behind. Mm. Sure, right. thank so, you for that. Sorry, sorry, right. sorry. And on the international business, we had a beautiful business that we used to run, transaction business, a project business that we used to run. Uh, so people who understand onward who had a chance to visit our offices, we had a very large team at some point in time, four or five years ago, for uh, our manufacturing business which we were, our biggest customers used to be tier three, tier two, tier one suppliers in Mexico, in Europe. Um, uh, they were doing robotic works, jigs, fixture, tooling business. And entire business we exited in December 2023, which is two weeks, three weeks ago. But we not we exited the business. The capability exists where we're supporting the same thing our engineers, our teams, our managers are supporting now, OEMs directly. We just exited the transaction business where we were put in 50 engineers for a project for nine months, then there'll be a lull for three weeks, and then we'll again put in another 70 engineers for another six months, then there'll be lull for again two months. That whole cycle of the project, fixed price project is what we have moved out of. And that's what makes us feel great. Now we are working with OEM through the year and hopefully for the next five to 10 years. And sure, all yeah. of this is outcome of the cash on hand, just to close the conversation. Right? We've gone from 35 crores cash on hand to 87 crores cash on hand in one year. And hopefully we can keep building on this. Fair point, Jigar. So actually, you know what, I mean, when you talk about this OEMs, right, I mean, uh, I, I'm just looking at your uh, two years back conference call transcript as well. And that time sure. also we had six of the last, uh, largest 10 global OEMs ever as our customer. 
uh, in the transportation and mobility segment within industrial and heavy machinery we had five out of top eight heavy engineering oem right in some sense so what i understand from your answer is that within those clients as well the quality of work that we are doing is improving uh, right i mean is that understanding correct and then what you also touched upon are two things right in the call you mentioned that you don't want to sacrifice on margin and most of your revenue is coming from existing customer so uh, are we letting go of some of these business opportunities new opportunities which are coming at lower margin and that's why this 120 crore of quarterly run rate is slightly sticky and uh, you know maybe from march onwards uh, given that the drag of the uh, i mean you know some of these business which we are exiting uh, will not no longer be there uh, so from there on we will be able to finally get out of this 120 crore range is that a fair way to look at it that's one way to look at it yes you know there's so many things that can change in a business you know I, i'll tell you how i look at the business right i know it's 658 i'll look at how, how i look at the business we, we had these customers rightfully as i said two years ago or maybe three or sometimes four years back as well from customers the difference was we were doing only only mechanical work for them or only let's say some support work for them application support today we are working on actually new product development for them or we're setting up an odc for them or we are engaged in uh, projects which are on the embedded side where we did not even have a capability or a capacity three years ago and last is all these customers that i'm talking about please keep in mind our biggest selling point today about we're selling to the customers with digital services and that's where that has gone from zero a couple of years ago to about 30 or 40 percent plus now so that's what we're selling we're not necessarily selling mechanical services or embedded services to customers we're selling uh, digital services and once we are convincing the customer then we are going back into other areas so everything has changed from a company perspective so if you look at from an in, inside out outside in looks a bit similar to as you rightly said inside out with a whole new company with a completely different way of looking at stuff sure jigar can i push plus one last question if you are okay sure uh, so uh, so you know i mean we have been in investment phase right in terms of we have been recruiting business heads uh, we have been recruiting some of the uh, uh, client facing people also for quite some time now uh, right at least for the last two years is what i understand so when you uh, at the top of the business when you look at uh, you know the, uh, the the base business right and the growing part of the business right in some sense uh, how do you uh, uh, ensure that the base business uh, or whatever you have already invested in is giving you enough ROI, right, in some sense? And based on the uh, inputs that you get from the existing part of the business, how do you fine tune the kind of investment that you want to make in the future? Just want to understand from your lens, right, inside out, how do you look at this, uh, the core, the, the, the part of the business which is getting into stability and the other part of business which is continuously growing, right, in some sense? So if you can just give us some sense as to how you look at that would be very helpful sure uh, this is just to simplify it Let, let's take us as an example right my head of us was here last couple of days we have let's say 15 large oems or, or 15 customers which each needs uh committed investment from us today my sales team is supporting it and my delivery organization from offshore that's not enough. What these customers, which are the largest OEMs, is now they want to, they would like us to open a, a, a point of account manager in that location where the customer is based. Number one. So you look at from a pure cost perspective, that's a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar investment straight. Then at some point in time, they would like us to be very clear which line of business we are selling, digital, mechanical, and embedded, and that's a that's a decision that we have to make based on what the customer is telling us. Third, we have to open a project office most likely in that place because customer is not looking only at offshore arbitrage because the customer might or might not have a capital center in India. What they're looking for is a young, serious company which is debt-free uh, with a very strong corporate governance who they would like to partner with for the next five to 10 years. Because please keep in mind, the OEMs don't add supplies just by the fly. After a lot of due diligence, they have. it's a huge cost to them. And the last point is, once, let's say, that half a million to a million dollar investment is committed from our side, it's the whole mechanism that the whole company can support this customer to scale. So if all these parameters fall into place, that's where we come in. That's where we say yes. 
So let's say right now I've said yes to four customers where we will start the investment as early as February 1st. As soon as the team goes back to US. Sure, Jigar. Thanks we'll, a lot and all the best. Right? We will invest behind, heavily behind these four customers instead of investing behind 15. Understood. Right. Right. You are narrowing down our focus. Very clear. Thanks a lot, Jigar, for yes. all the answers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was the last question for today's conference. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jigesh. Jigar Mehta for closing comments. Thank you again, everybody, for joining in uh, today. I know it's Friday evening. Really appreciate your time. And I hope um, some of the Q&A helped and the opening remarks. If there are any further questions, please reach out to our IR managers around Sin Young. And we'll be very happy to address, uh, address them next week. Thank you again, and have a great weekend. On behalf of Onward Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.